Good morning, everyone. This is Mr. Richmond, and you are watching Plants video number four. And this is the final video in the plant series. And today we're going to spend some time talking about non vascular plants. We talked about vascular plants, the angiosperms and the gymnosperms, about how plants have, uh, vascular plants have tubes, right, to move nutrients, water, and food throughout the plant. Today we're going to talk about non-vascular plants, those plants that do not have tubes. And they're unique plants, and there are several uh, characteristics of these plants we need to talk about, okay? So I'll try not to bore you. Hang on, and hopefully this will help you out. Well, of course, number one, a non-vascular plant does not have tubes, will not have tubes at all. In fact, they really don't have roots, stems, or leaves, true roots, stems, or leaves. They're very unique plants, and they don't have a lot of the uh, different kinds of, of uh, adaptations that a vascular plant would have. But again, they don't have tubes, which means they don't have a real efficient way of moving water and nutrients and food throughout the plant. Uh, actually, the water and the nutrients have to be absorbed. If you remember in class, we talked about absorption. And for instance, if I had this small cup of water and I spilt some of it on the table that I'm uh, seated at right now, I could take a paper towel, I could lay it on top of that small little spill, and we know what would happen. Always pops up. We know what would happen. That water would be absorbed into the fibers of the paper towel, right? Pick the paper towel up, water's in the towel. Now, the paper towel didn't like you know, physically suck the water up into the towel. It was just absorbed. So that's a nice way of looking at it. absorption or what it means to absorb something. That's how it happens with non-vascular plants. They absorb those water and nutrients. They don't really use a root system like maybe a tree can dig down deep with its roots and find water and find the things that it needs. Uh, they also, because they have to absorb water and nutrients like all the time, they have to have a source. So they tend to live in damp places or moist areas, you know, maybe near uh, a waterway of some kind, a little creek, a little branch, or just an area in the woods that doesn't get a lot of sunlight uh, because they would dry out and they would die. Uh, they also uh, tend to be smaller plants. They don't grow up big like a tree or, or even a lot of just common plants we see out here. They tend to stay really, really small. And, uh, and I'll tell you why right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, because they don't have tubes, a non-vascular plant has to pass water and nutrients and food from cell to cell, from cell to cell. Now, we know cells are really small, and so that process of moving water and nutrients from cell to cell can be very slow. If the plant was very large, by the time the water and nutrients got to the top of the plant, the plant would be dead. So they tend to be small. Um, so what I thought I would do is maybe give you some examples of the, of the difference between how tubes make that happen and how these non-vascular plants uh, do it, passing those nutrients and water from cell to cell. So I've got some pictures, and if I can find them, let's see if we can hunt them up. Let me go to this folder right here. Now, a vascular plant, I think of a vascular plant as kind of like you know, a fireman using water, you know, like a water hose, you know? I mean, you can move a huge volume of water in a real small amount of time. And my computer is taking all day to open a simple picture. You gotta love it. There it comes. And there's that picture. We'll make it a little bigger. But you can see, you know, that water hose allows a lot of water to be moved through that hose in a short amount of time there's a fire, that's great because you can put a lot of water and move a lot of water to that fire to put it out in a very sh short amount of time, as I said. So it's very efficient, you know, but with not, and so that would be like a vascular plant, but with a non-vascular plant, you got to go from cell to cell, and it reminds me of the way they used to have to put out a lot of fires in the old days, and here you see a modern picture of it, where they actually had to dip buckets into water and pass the buckets along, and the guy at the end near the fire, he throws the water on the fire, 
and then he grabs the next bucket and the next bucket. And we know that using a, a, a fire hose would be a much better way to put out that fire than to have to do it bucket by bucket by bucket. It's nowhere near as efficient. It's much slower. And chances are whatever's on fire is going to burn to the ground before you get it put out uh, with these buckets. Maybe you will, maybe you won't. But with a fire hose, you got a much better shot at making that happen because you're moving it more water quicker, much more efficiently. <coughs> Excuse me. So this would be, the buckets would be like a non-vascular plant, moving water and nutrients from cell to cell, whereas the fire hose would be like the tubes in a vascular plant. So that's kind of a nice analogy that I like to use a lot of times. And, uh, and then finally, just one quick word, <coughs> excuse me, about non-vascular plants. They reproduce with spores, not seeds. And a spore is kind of a strange little thing. You know, it almost looks like a little wart or something. These little spore, spores develop on the leaf itself and tend to be blown away by the wind or washed away by water. And so they really don't use seeds like an angiosperm or a gymnosperm, a vascular plant. They just have these little spores that allow for new plants to be created. And these will blow away again by the wind or be carried by water. And if they end up in the right conditions in the soil, a new non-vascular plant will grow. So just remember this, vascular plants tend, almost all vascular plants, not everyone, but almost all, reproduce with uh, seeds and non-vascular plants are going to reproduce with spores. Uh, and you can look at that and tell that's not a seed. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's a little bit of information about non-vascular plants. They don't have tubes. They absorb water and nutrients, right? They have to pass those water and nutrients from cell to cell because they don't have tubes, just like the buckets. They tend to live in damp places because they're constantly having to take in uh, more water, more nutrients. They really don't have true root stems or leaves, and they don't grow up to be very tall because the water would never get to the top of the plant. So hopefully that helps you, and uh, we'll talk more about it in class. See ya.